Hello everybody, welcome back to TF Custom Shaving Brushes Workshop, how are we all? I believe we've got a couple of happy guys in here tonight, or maybe one happy guy anyway. I think Brett, Brett wants to share his uh, first initial thoughts on his uh, nice new rhodium shaving brush that he got. Feel free to share it all with us mate. <laughs> I told you you would like it. Harrell, how you doing buddy? I'm just catching up in the chat what you guys are up to. Yeah, that's no problem Harrell, you just drop in and out as you need to buddy, that's no worries at all. Grey Dog, good morning to you mate, how you doing? Night time here but not to worry. Morning where you are. Morning's all good. I'm going to be doing another one of these um, chameleon hybrids with a little bit of hit, uh, holographic in it. I'm going to be doing another one of them tonight. We'll see how we go with it. Um, if it's going to blow out too long, I don't want to be on here. I want to be on here probably around about an hour and a half. So. I think what I'm probably going to end up starting to do, guys, is split the uh, split the videos up into two parts. Um, we'll see how we go with that. Um, but I think, you know, when we're starting to get into three, three and a bit hour streams, I think there's... Not that I mind doing it, don't get me wrong. I don't mind doing it, but um, I think it gets a little bit too long for the average viewer. Um, so I think I'm going to probably look at trying to either trim them back a bit and maybe have it in two parts or three parts if it's a really long one. Um, but we'll see how we go, because it does mean I've got to tie up chucks and stuff like that when I'm, when I'm part way through a brush. Unless I can get it to a stage where um, I can put it onto another chuck or it's ready to go onto another chuck and I can unchuck it and then that frees up the chucks then. I haven't got chucks tied up, um, you know, with part finished brushes in them. But we'll see how we go. Early days, early days. Yeah, so um, anybody that's in the stream, um, Brett received his, uh, his new brushes in the post. Um, so he got two new brushes. So he's tried the uh, Rhodium one first, and I'll leave him to tell you in there what he thinks about it. But um, they're pretty special, Brett, aren't they? And obviously Razor, Razor's, Razor's had one. Um, he, he tried he tried his one and then we had an issue so we've remade his and his new one along with another another brush um, which is another um, rhodium is on its way to razor too if he hasn't already got them so um, if he hasn't got them today I'd say he'll be definitely getting them tomorrow Yeah, I mean, I, I quite like the look of the the, uh, the one that we the one that we redone there for Razor. I, I really like the look of it, um, just with a bit of holographic in it. And I don't know if you've seen the little video clip I put up um, with it sitting on the turntable, and I took the the little video clip of it going round on the turntable, and the way it turned and the way you got the light through the handle and the way the barrel sort of disappeared when it got side on, it was pretty special looking. I thought. Anyway, I've got another one in here, so I think from memory this one was the one that had the gold holographic in it. So I'm going to start turning this one. Now it'll probably be fitted with a, I've got a couple of knots here. I've got a 26mm uh, two band finest there, reasonably dense, not awfully dense, but reasonably dense, um, as you can see there. Um, and I've also got a, a 26mm uh, tuxedo there as well, but I, I, I think all going well, I think I'll end up putting the um, the two band finest in it, um, and we'll see how that looks in it. I think it should look quite nice. But anyway, I'm going to crack on, and um, I'm going to start turning this now. I haven't decided on shape yet, really. I've put a couple of marks on here, but I haven't I haven't really determined decided on shape fully. So yeah, I'm a bit um, I'm a bit lost for the creative juices flowing tonight. Um, I'm just not sure. I had a big night last night. I done my. Um, I was at my SES 
uh, full unit training last night and we actually done um, sort of a, a um, rescue scenario. So it was quite full on um, and I was there until about, well from about half past six to about half past ten and then I sat up, watched a little bit of the news and caught up on current Covid things and and then uh, I didn't get to my bed until pretty late and I slept in late this morning and uh, yeah it's been pretty full on so um, it was pretty mind taxing but anyway we're all good now um, but I, like I said I'm just haven't thought in what shape I'm going to make this one yet so I might end up just doing one of the shapes that I like doing and you know be done with it um, I think the blank will suit that anyway so um, I'm thinking I might just go with that um, just turn that music down just a little bit I think see how we go with that Yeah, they're, they're uh, pretty amazing, Brett, so um, yeah, enjoy it, mate, and, as, and as, you, as you get a, it won't take too long, but you'll get a few shaves on it, mate, and um, she'll be um, even better, mate, once those tips start to hook over and start really gelling up, pretty much starts it pretty much straight away with the rhodium, but um, get, a, get a few shaves in it, and um, she'll be even better, mate. Okay, so your one's... Um, so hoping Friday, yeah, so tomorrow might, yeah, I'd, I'd say, I mean there may have been a chance it might have got there today, but, but um, yeah, it's probably going to be more so um, tomorrow might, you should, should get them for sure. So we'll be looking for your feedback on these ones as well, Razor. Alright, well we might get started then, eh? I'll put a 25mm hole in here anyway, um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll take the rest out by hand, because I'll need to take it out to about maybe 27, 27 and a half, depending on the knots, um, and I'll be taking it in probably about 15mm to start with, and, um, and then we'll see how we go from there I think. Just looking at the knots, the knots, probably the, uh, the two band finest has probably just got an extra couple of mil over the... Um, over the synth, over the tux, so um, we'll see how we go. I'll take it in about 15, I think, and then that should get us started. Anyway, let's get going, guys, eh? So I'll leave you guys to, um, I'll leave you guys to do your thing in there. And um, just uh, let me know if anything goes astray or goes wrong, guys, sound-wise or um, anything like that. And in the meantime, I'll get started, eh? So we've got six in the stream so far. If anybody hasn't subscribed, I'd really appreciate a subscribe. So if you can subscribe below, click the little bell and you'll be notified of any up and coming videos or when I go live. It just sends you a notification. So yeah, just um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and we'll crack on with this now. So I'm just gonna slow this down. I haven't got my, um, whatever they call it, I forget what they call it now. Um, I haven't got that on tonight, I've just got my jumper and I've got a pair of long pants on tonight because it's a little bit cool here tonight. So I'm going to set that on zero. There we are, we'll bring it in a touch. Probably there. And I'll just slow that down a little bit more. So we're going into a bit of timber here as well as burl. And it is pretty hard. Might take that out and give it a little clean. Boy, I had some mess in here to clean up today from the other night. I had to prepare this one earlier as well. Take it from a square blank to a round blank and just face off the ends and stuff. So um, that's about 13 mil there. We'll just give it another. 
another bit of a clean out. Um, I don't think any of these will fit in because like I said that's a 26 mil knot. Yeah, none well that one's just going in, but it won't go all the way in. Um, and the tucks definitely won't go in. Um, it'll be bigger, yep. So um what I'll do is I'll take this off for now. And I'm just going to widen up that hole to about 27. And then I'll check the knots. And just see what loft we're going to put on them. Um, I'll speed that up. Find a tool I'm looking for. Actually, I better, I better do the right thing here and get my um, calipers out and just measure that out for 20, um, 27. So I'm just setting my calipers to 27. Is about there. That should be good. And I'll probably have to lift this up now. Actually, I don't have to take much at all, so um, I might even just go in with a tool without the uh, calipers there because I, I roughly know where I need to be. And I need to be up there a little bit faster. Pretty much sort of half a mil off either side. That'll give me the 27 that I need. Yep, pretty good there. So all I'm gonna do is just go straight in at that now. Just need to bring that tool rest back a touch. And we're catching resin and timber here, so it's a little bit harder. Since we um, stabilized the timber, it's, it's made the ball really hard. Even harder than the um, than the acrylic, I reckon. Okay, so we're in at about 15 mil here. That's a nicer a nicer size for the knot. Um, and all I'm going to do now is just work out how. See, that's still too tight for the tucks, but I'm going to go with the two band. So that's us in about there. And I reckon I need to take this down to about 54, 53, 54. And I'm currently sitting at about 57. So if I want 53, I need to go on about another four mil. So that was us at 15. Um, so I'll take that out the way. I'll bring that and I'll just check that for 15, just to be safe. No, it's actually, we're only um, 13 there. So, four plus another two, I reckon. So we'll go there, set it to zero again, get the start, slow her down, fire her up. Now as you'll note, we do have some timber and acrylic in the top of this one. Um, but because it's not a rhodium, I don't have any concerns about it blowing the, um, blowing the handle apart. So um, we'll be good with the two band finest in there. We shouldn't have that issue. 
nowhere near as dense or not. Speed the lathe up again, just go on and clean out the bottom. Geez, that's hard, I'll tell you. Just going to round that sharp edge over. That's better. Lovely. Okay, well we'll start a bit of start a bit of shaping now. Just checking the chat guys. Yeah, picture in picture. It's basically I have the picture in picture locked on the uh, the main shot all the time so that when I jump between the other shots you've always got that main one up there so you can see what I'm doing in and around the lathe as well. So um, yeah, all good mate. You've probably realised that now that I've switched to another camera view. So I've got a little bit to take out. On the top here, there's a couple of little, must have been the top of the blank, there's a couple of little, just tiny little bubbles on the surface, so we'll get rid of them first and then if we have to read depth we can, but I don't think we'll have to. Because I'm really not taking a lot out of there. I'm only taking very, very light cuts. That's all good. Plus I was a little bit um, over, over depth when I um, checked that knot for loft, so by taking it down a little bit anyway, it's going to just bring my loft back into where I wanted it originally at 53, 54. So I'm just getting rid of those little bubbles once they're gone, we're all good. That's the timber you're hearing there, round on the edge. Almost there now, we've just got a couple of little small ones there. So like I said, if I don't get this one finished in the stream tonight, it's no big deal, we'll finish it uh, the next night. It's the one little, 
one little bubble there. So we'll keep going until we get it away. So how's your days been, guys? You haven't been, guys, you haven't been too busy? Is uh, COVID still impacting you with your um, with your work, or are you um, able to uh, work on as normal? <sighs> no, I think it's just um, they just get a little bit too long, mate. To be honest, um, I mean, not everybody's going to want to sit for three hours and watch a stream on one brush, you know. And they do take a lot of time because they're they're just not your normal brush where you can then um, throw a piece of acrylic on the lathe, turn it to shape, finish it. Um, these require a lot more work and effort because you've got to get the burrow right um, you've got to get the um, possibly fill in the, uh, the top section of the, the handle with um, the pigments um, there's a number of different things that um, you need to do with these obviously the sanding's pretty detailed because of the burrow um, and then you've got to super, super glue finish it as well so they are, they're a lot more um, there's a lot more work, you know. Oh, cool, that's good, Harrell. Excellent. Yeah, you've been doing a bit of renovations, I believe, have you, around the house? I think I saw one of your lives on, um, on uh, Facebook, mate. And um, I think it was you that was doing, doing it anyway, and I, th and I think you were doing some house renovations or something. Oh, well, that's good. Good. Excellent. We all need to be working, don't we? Right, let me just check. I think I'm happy with that top there now. Um, so I just want to check that knot again and just check my, my final... Actually, I should hit that with a little bit of sandpaper first. Because we shaped the top so we've sharpened the edge up again. Ah, beautiful. Bang on 53 now. That's what I wanted. 53, 54. Lovely. And we've got a nice mix of uh, half burl, half resin up the top there. And um, I'm probably going to reset my shape on this now. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to keep it simple because I think the brush has got, I think the brush has got, the handle's going to have everything that it needs. It's going to be pretty full on with what's in this one. Um, so I think I'll keep the shape nice and simple. So we're done with that for now. We'll come back to that probably later. To put the, put the coin in the bottom, hopefully, if we, if we think we can get away with one, which I think we will in, this, in the case of this one. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to define my shape now and, and my overall where I want things to be. So I originally set that around about 23. So I'm going to take that just a little bit more. I'm going to take that to 24. So set that at 24. So I'll put a new mark on there. And at this stage, I'll still keep that as being around about 70 mil. So I'll maybe just lengthen that up a little bit as well. And we can refine it once we start shaping, so um, there's no mad rush to... I think this one's going to look quite nice though, lads. I think um, they all do, I suppose, but I think this one with the gold holographic is going to look quite nice. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm just going to go in here now. Just rounding that top. I might put you up to um, that shot for a little while so you can see exactly what I'm doing with the tool. I'm hoping you can hear how hard that barrel is. It's rock solid, eh? All I'm doing now is just refining that shape now. Taking off any um, obvious high spots in that in that round. And I think I'm relatively happy with that, so I'll just tidy up this top edge here now. Okay, let's have a look. That's nice. Just want to get a little bit more clean up on that edge there. And a little bit in there. And then I still need to just take a little bit of a high spot off in here, but that edge there is good now. Okay, that'll do me for that. Good, good, good. You guys are all having a good chat now, yeah, that's good. Then we go with the carbide.
don't want any explosions on this, so um, I'm trying to be very careful with the carbide because it is pretty hard. We've got a bit to go yet, so we'll keep keep going. And this is really where you need the carbide. If I was going in here just with normal, um, my normal wood turning tools, and I've got pretty good quality wood turning tools, but if I was going in with them, I'd be having to keep going back to the grinder every two minutes. Um, they would just be um, as blunt as anything. So um, that's where the carbide comes into its own. But I think I might have to just drop it down slightly just a little shady too high, I think. So we're starting to get there a bit, a bit now. Can you see that boil? It's unbelievable. There's a few rough bits in here, um, so obviously we'll have to um, dicky them up with the with the CA finish. We'll have to just fill them so that I get a nice flat finish. Um, they're not too bad. They're, I mean, they're filled with a, with the resin, but um, they're just a little sort of like surface crack in there and here um, but once we put the CA over the whole thing the CA will actually fill those cracks and they'll, they'll just they'll be still there but they'll just basically um, you won't be able to feel them or anything there's no issue to the handle put it that way and we've got a nice bit here coming round with the barrel here just coming in I quite like that and we're gonna have another bit down here so um, yeah, it's going to look quite nice. Now I am going to put my point in the bottom here where I want to um, I'll bring the tool rest to there. I've got to let it down anyway, right down to go in with a parting tool. So I'm going to just set the um, set the length of the handle. Um, so I'm going to go in just, I'm actually thinking I might go, I'll go to there. So you can see even the parting tool struggling and I just sharpened that before the stream. And that's probably about as far as I'm going to go there. Then I'll bring the tool rest out and back up. Because I want the, the, the cut of the tool, I want to be on either on centre or above centre. You don't want it to be below centre.
Now I'm going to have a look at that just to see. So I can hear a couple of different noises there. I just want to see where it's at. So that needs to be thinner here. Looking at it because it's quite dumpy at the moment. But that's not too bad there. I'll probably just give it a little bit of a round in the very bottom there. And then we'll bring that up. So I'm happy with that. I'm just going to thin that hollow out a little bit more. Oh, and I probably need to reduce that ring too. Um, so we'll just go in and reduce that while we're here. That's fine. And now I can hollow that. Hollow that out. And also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little bit more off the underside of this ring, which will make the handle look a little bit longer again, rather as smaller and chubbier. And I don't want to go too thin because um, I want to be able to see the beauty inside the um, inside the handle, you know. So what I'll do, just to confirm that I'm, I'm looking at it properly, and I'm seeing the shape that I want. I'm going to sit the knot in there. And yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. As far as um, how it looks. And if I go to the other shot there, you'll get to see that a little bit there. Not 100% sh good shot from there, but um, it's not too bad. And you can see we've got plenty of visual in the resin here in the handle. Um, because we'll get to see that chameleon and the um, and the holographic in there as well. So there's quite a bit of that there and there's quite a lot of barrel as well. So it's really a half and half this one. Um, there's more barrel to, barrel to the bottom than there is at the top, but then there's more acrylic at the top than there is at the bottom. So it's a sort of well balanced, I would say, um, handle. It should look quite, um, quite interesting to be honest. Um, and I am quite liking that. I'm just thinking I might go in and take a little bit more in here. Um, and I'm just not 100% sure whether I should narrow that a little bit more. I might go a little bit more. So I better bring in the support again. Lock that in. We'll bring the tool back in again, tool rest. And I'm just gonna go in, just might bring it out a touch with a bigger tool. That's better. Much better. Much better. Okay, and we'll go in for a little bit more hollow, and then we'll call it that. I think. You see how my height is? Probably up just a little touch.
That's better. Get rid of the bumps there now. And we'll just hold this out a little bit more under here. And a little bit more here. And I'm also thinking I might go in a little bit more with a a bit more in here as well I think Yeah, that's starting to look a bit better. It's just, it's amazing how just those very subtle changes in the shape can make all the difference. the gear down um, might just bring that music down just a touch Let's um, slow it down and we can have a better better look at it, eh? I think it's going to look quite nice though, where it's at. <coughs> yeah, that's nice. That's going to be... We're going to see enough of that chameleon and we're going to see enough of the um, holographic in that. Um, and we've got quite a fair bit of barrel in there that we're going to see so um, yeah I'm pretty happy with that I am just going to take another little bit off that ring because there's a little just a tiny little mark there so if I can get that away I'll be happy a little bit more that should be it now I think still there it's just like a little bit of grain that's um, whether it's been a small crack or that's it she's gone now that's good <sighs> yeah I'm pretty happy with that I think we'll um, we'll leave it at that I think guys we'll start in the sanding I think so I'll get that out the way we'll pull this back We'll get that. Now from that camera that we're in now, I'll just take it back a little bit. You'll get to see how much resin and how much barrel is there. So that's currently the resin you're looking at there. You can see the barrel at the top here. And then we've got barrel 
starting round the bottom there. It goes quite a, quite a bit round the handle, quite a bit round. Then we start coming back to the resin at the top here again and on all the way around. And then we've got this nice little section down the bottom here, about that wide, where there's barrel either side, but there's a little bit of resin and a little bit of the chameleon right down to the bottom. So we'll see that little bit on the bottom, which will probably be just round about where the coin's going to sit, the medallion. So, without further ado, let's get into the sanding, eh? Yeah, I think, um, I think I'll just keep the shape of this fairly simple. I don't think I'll put any V-cuts or anything like that in it because um, I want the brush to be all about the, uh, the chameleon and the, um, and the holographic and the ball, obviously. So um, I'm not going to do any Vs or anything in it. Not at this stage anyway. It's probably a little bit fast for sanding. Slow it down a bit more. You'll probably see the shape better from that shot there. I think it's quite pleasant. Slightly different to what I normally do again, but um, there's nothing wrong with having them all very, very, very slightly different. Little subtle changes make it interesting. Okay, that'll do the first grip. And um, I'll just give the uh, bottle a little bit of a hand sand as well before we start getting too carried away. So I also donated a couple of brushes today from stock. Um, there's a couple going to um, PNC for um, their uh, charity raffle that they normally have once a year or once every couple of years I think it is, maybe, maybe once a year. In memory of one of the old um, members, long time member. So um, I donated a couple of brushes to that today. I also sent one down to Tasmania for the fella who's doing a, um, a charity fundraising event for um, I think it's um, the cancer one. What's the cancer one? Shave for a cure or something like that. Um, so I sent one down to him and then I had another fella from PNC buy the um, the barrel with the green top on it. So I think that one's heading up to, I think he's another PNC fella. Yeah, he is. And um, that one's heading up to the territory. But they were brushes that were already made um, that I pulled out of my stock to donate to those causes. Um,
Um, I probably can, but the problem with them, uh, Brett, is that the um, the quality of them is not very good. Um, the bristles on them are fairly um, fairly rigid. If you get yourself on a couple of the shaving groups, you'll hear some of the guys talking about them. Um, they're just not the best quality. They're yeah, they look nice. There's some really nice bright colours, reds and greens and blues, and um, but the quality of the actual bristles um, is not up to scratch as a lot of the other ones. So um, yes, I can get one if you want to get one, but um, I would sort of say to you that being used to what you've got with tuxedos, um, two band finest, rhodiums, uh, you'll probably find that it's a terrible, terrible knot. They're not the best. E excuse the pun. They are not the best. <laughs> they're done to look pretty, but they don't, um, they're not, they're not a nice, not on the face. There's a bit more cracking in this barrel than I uh, thought there might be. There's quite a bit of cracking in it. It's all character in the barrel though. I mean, it's naturally there. I mean, it's stabilized, so it's not, um, it's not a defect to the handle in any way. In actual fact, the stabilizing will have um, held it together. So um, it's probably better now than it was before. And Mali Burl is very bad for cracking, even when it's even if you take your time and dry it properly, and um, which I mean this one was pretty well dried, and I had them in the oven as well to dry before I put them into uh, resin. Um, but it's notorious for cracking, so. There are a lot of nice barrels out there, a lot of different types of barrels. I mean, I've got four massive ones sitting over in the corner there, big, um, I believe they're uh, red gum barrels. They're about uh, 40, 50, 60 mil thick. Um, and the biggest one's probably about a meter in diameter. And I've got four of them over there. Beautiful color. Nice rich reds, rusty reds. Um, but again, there's a lot of voids and cavities in it that would need to be filled with resin or something to, um, to actually make brushes from them. So how are we going for time? That's about an hour. And we're still working our way through the sanding, so we'll see how we go. So that's the third paper. We've got another two to go on that before we go to the wet.
So you can probably see in the in the shot there, you can probably see a lot of the cracks in there that have now got a little bit of sawdust in them. So obviously what I'll do is I'll, I'll blow them out, make sure there's no sawdust there. And um, I mean, I can't really feel those cracks to be honest. Well, I can I can put my fingernail in them just very, very slightly. Um, but I'll blow the dust out of them and then we'll, when we put the CA finish on, um, the CA should, you know, it might take a few coats, but we should be able to fill them. And then the cracks will just be a feature within the timber of the, um, the barrel. So there's a lot around the base here. And then there's quite a few up around here. This is not too bad through here. Um, there's a couple just, just here in the, in the hollow, but um, not too bad. But there's going to be a fair bit of sanding in this one with the CA as well, so um, that's why I'm saying we may end up making this a, a two-parter as well, so that we're not here all night trying to get it finished, you know. I'd rather take my time with it and get it right and, um, and have a nice brush at the end of it than try and rush through and you know get it done in one hit when it takes us through three hours or so. And bearing in mind that these have already had a lot of time put into them too because um, you know the resin, the, the timber had to be um, had to go in the oven for a period of time to dry to just make sure there was no moisture in it. Then it had to go into the uh, stabilizing chamber and be put under vacuum for a lengthy period and then it was left to um, sit for twice that period. So it sat in resin for days. Um, along with other pieces obviously. And then on and off vacuum, on and off soaking, and then, um, then it had to be cut to size, put into a mould, then we cast the resin in there, or well actually I had to cut it to size, then I had to um, put the chameleon on, dry that, then um, from there, it was cut to size, put in the mould, cast with resin, holographic pigment added, put in the uh, pressure pot, under pressure, 50 psi, and then, then I take it out, then I had to prepare the blank from square to round, to put it on the lithe, make it easier. And now we're going through the shaping of the handle, sanding, then we're going to go through the finish. So there's a lot of time goes into these. I mean, they are a fairly special brush though, but there's a lot of time goes into them, rather than just a normal everyday shaving brush. I think we're up to, um, I think we're up to 50, 56 subscribers now on the channel as well, which is good. It's taken a long time to get there from, uh, I think we had about 53, 54. It's taken a while to get up past that 55, but we're there. Um, this will be the, once this video goes up on YouTube, and once they've finished rendering it and putting it up, this will be the 30th video that I've put up in the two and a bit months since I started the live streams. So there's been a fair few videos put up. It's been pretty busy, pretty hectic. But we've got there. I forget how many uh, view hours have taken place so far, but it's quite a lot. Okay, that's the 
fourth one. This will be the last one in the sandpapers. So we'll get rid of that for now. Oh, Brett, you need to watch the um, you need to watch the last the beginning of the last stream too. Um, I got some more pigment powders, um, and there's a couple of green ones in there. And I did make special mention of you when I was showing them. So when you take into account that's 30 videos that I've put up and say the average is sort of two and a half hours so there's a fair few hours of video being put up in the, in the last two and a bit months just over two months I do have them here if I can find them without having to um, go too far. There you go. Uh, what camera are we on? Let me go to that other shot. There you go. Two different greens. This one here, this one is jungle green. And this one here is emerald green. So they are a little bit different. They look fairly similar, but they are a little bit different. So yeah, two greens, mate. But I've got some other really nice ones there too. Nice colours, so I'm looking forward to using some of them. So I think what I might do guys is I might get this one wet sanded and I'll get it clear so that you can actually get a look at how it's going to look and depending on the time then we may call it at that and then we may come back in the next one and we can um, well I might even start the CA in this one and then we can finish the CA and final sanding and buffing and setting the knot in the next stream I think that might be the way to go I liquid fire I think that one was razor that you're talking about liquid fire Because we're going to CA finish this and because there's quite a lot of barrel in it, the CA will go over the whole handle. Um, so we will have a, you know, double, triple sanding to do on this particular one, depending on how it uh, turns out. So um, there is going to be a lot of sanding in this one. So that's another reason why I think if we split it up, Yeah. <sighs> 
Okay, so that'll do it for the sandpapers. Um, now we'll go to the, uh, the wet. And as you can see, I've got some fresh water there. So here we go with the wet. I'm going to slow it right down. And that's the other thing, we may end up having to paint, same as what I've done with your one, um, Razor, we may end up having to paint the uh, more chameleon inside the uh, where the knot's going to be sitting as well. So again, that's something else that'll need to be done. So I think we'll, I think it'll be wise to split it up over the two um, the two strings. So there's still a bit of sanding to be done here. Now the other thing guys with these hybrid blanks um, I mean these ones are probably a little bit better than the fact that they're stabilized but you should never leave them sitting near a window or anything like that where they're going to get exposed to um, you know the hot sun or anything like that because um, you just shouldn't do that with the, with the timber it doesn't even although it's stabilized we shouldn't do that so um, keep them in an area where they're in the shade or you know they're not getting exposed to significant temperature changes um, but I mean I've done everything possible with these ones that can be done to to make them uh, stand up like I said the only thing is the um, the rhodiums just require that next level again so um, Oh, stop rubbing it in, will you? <laughs> I will eventually make myself a rhodium. Or get myself a rhodium and make myself a nice new handle. I could probably move on a couple of my, um, my old ones to um, maybe a new shaver or something like that. We'll see. I do like my handles that I've my, my brushes that I've got. We get attached to them, I think, don't we? Same with our razors, we get attached to them. So you should be starting to see that come into effect now guys. Um, we've got a little bit of colour there now. It's only going to get better and better.
Oh, I've, got, I've got too many brushes to make yet. I've still got two or three brushes ahead of me yet to make um, orders for. I've got one for a fellow overseas that's going to be done in Ferrari red. Um, I just got another order today for um, a chameleon holographic similar to your one, um, Razor, to die. Um, so I've got a I'm going to have to try and get that one happening soon. I, I do have a fair bit of burrow sitting that's all being stabilised, so I don't have to go through that complete entire process. And I do still have some in the pot that's been in there for about a week and a half, two weeks now. Um, well, it actually went in straight after I've done that first lot, so it's been in there for a little while. And then I've still got all Sarjan's ones to do, which I, I keep saying I'm going to get on to but I just I keep getting more and more brushes so I've got to keep doing thine that's what I've got to keep up with my orders okay so that's starting to look the part we're starting to get a bit of color in that yet now you guys probably can't see it as well in the camera yet, but we'll, you will start to see it once we get a bit more of a shine on there. <laughs> Mate, you can order one, we just put it on the list. We just put it on the list. And if we get to it, we get to it. We get to it sooner, we get to it sooner. If we don't, it's as long as it takes. Generally I can get on top of them pretty quickly but the streaming sort of um, disturbs it a bit because I, you know, I've got so much preparation to do for the streaming but like I said I enjoy doing the streaming as well and I think it's just another way showing people how much time and effort goes into the brushes um, <laughs> yeah, you've had your quota for this uh, for this while now, um, Razor. They should serve you well, mate. They should serve you very well. And you'll enjoy every shave you have with them too, I bet. So a little bit of a hand rub with this grit and then we'll continue on again until we get another two or three grits through and then I'll give it a little bit of a hand rub. Mm. 
you should be starting to see that bottle come into its own now and the acrylic will start clearing up and shining up and showing colours better shortly as well. Nearly done it again. These pads are going to be fit for the bin very shortly. That's ridiculous. They should have lasted a lot longer than that. You guys see that bow? Look at that. Yeah, there was three, three last year, mate.
So I'm thinking we might get through this guys and then um, I'll maybe get it dried off, we can have a better look at it and then I think we'll call it a day and then we'll have the uh, completion of this one on um, this is Thursday isn't it so um, we'll have the completion of this one on Sunday unless I get a, a little sneaky one in beforehand again how does that sound But you're gonna to get to see how this one's gonna look finished. Well, almost finished. By the time we finish doing what I'm gonna do. So you're starting to see a bit more of it now. <laughs> just depends what I've got on mate if I can get on I'll um, if I've got things to do I've got to do them but if I, if I can get on I, I'll get on you know um, but Sunday will be the definite anyway I may even, if I can get this dried off, I may even just put a quick coat of CA over it so that you can see what it's going to look like. And then I think we'll call it a night after that and that'll be us just a bit over an hour and a half. We're an hour and a half now. I mean, I could go on all night, but um, I just don't think it's... Um, too fair to tie everybody up for such a long period of time you know all right so I'm just going to give this a little bit of a dry off and then I'll get some polishing polish onto it just to give it a little touch up We'll hit it with a little bit of methylated spirits to dry it out a bit. That one can go in the bin. Oh, missed. Uh, methylated spirits. Another paper towel. Still not as shiny as I want it yet, so um, there's a bit more work to go into it. This will let you see how it's going to look with a little bit of shine on it though. Um, so you can see that colour in there now. In that camera, there's the barrel. Back to the, um, the shine. So you can see that gold holographic and you can see the blues and the uh, red and the green and uh, there's a few colours starting to pop out in that one now and I'm just making sure that I've got everything out of all the cracks it's amazing I mean that paper towel you can see the brown tinge in it that's just you know from the dust and giving that a white 
But it's amazing how that methylated spirit seems to help in drying out the timber again. We've also got a little bit of sparkly colour up in here because there's a little bit of the uh, the holographic has got has gone up into there as well. So um, well, I don't think I've actually seen anybody else do this. Um, with the chameleon and the holographic. I, I can't see I've, I've seen any brushes being done like that. I mean, I could be wrong, there might be some out there, but I haven't seen any. So I'm just going to speed it up a bit to give that a, a good wipe and a good dry out. Get inside there as well. And I'll probably come back and do it again. I'm just going to go to that cut and polish shortly and put some of that on just to take it up a notch. Yeah, we can see those cracks reappear now, see? filled anyway with CI. You can see them reappear now. There's the holographic. It's still a little bit dull at the moment but it will um, it will pop out once we get it all done properly. I think we've got a blockage. There we go. No, still got a blockage. Unblocked. Forgot about my coffee, guys. One of these days I'll have a hot one, eh? What's going on here? Doesn't want to come out. No, we've got a blockage. Houston, we have a problem. God, close the lid before you go. I just put polish everywhere. Not to worry. Too much. Get some of that in here. Okay. That there for now. So we'll go through this and then we'll um, buff it in and then we'll have to polish it out but blow it out again so that we've got none of the polish in the uh, cracks. Yeah, it's tough drinking cold coffee, mate, because I really don't like iced coffees and stuff like that. I, I do like my coffee hot, but um, if I want to drink, 
I've got to drink it. Otherwise, I've got to go inside to get a drink. Because my fridge in here, which used to be a beer fridge, now has stabilizing resins, CA glues, um, you name it, it's in there. I've got a bit more work to do on the inside of that recess for the knot as well. This one's not come up quite as smooth as I would like it. I've still got a, a bit of marking around there, which is probably from the, um, the Fossner bit. Um, and I know that when I had that before, it, it took a lot of getting out. Um, so, um, let's see if I can get it in the bin this time. Yes! So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a buff off now at a faster speed. Still not as shiny as I would like it to be at this point. But we're going to um, blow all those cracks out again so we've got no polish or colour in them. Sorry about the noise lads. That's better. Just make sure we've got everything out. I'm actually thinking of colouring that, those cracks. I'm going to try that, boys. I'm going to try that. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, acrylic, black acrylic spray paint, enamel. I don't like how they're looking a little bit whitish, even though I've blown them out. And it's probably just the acrylic holding the um, holding the uh, the stabilising acrylic resin. So what I'm going to try and do is just darken it down. So I'm going to put a little bit of black into those cracks. So I'm giving all my secrets away here, am I? Aye? Okay, that should do that. Now we'll see the difference that that's made when I wipe the excess off. So I'll just get another, fold this towel back over, use the other side. And I'm just gonna 
lightly rub that back now with a little bit of methylated spirits to take any excess off. And you'll see the difference that that makes to the handle now. But I do need to get it all off. There as well. So there you go. We're back to the timber, but the, the cracks are darkened down now so they don't pop into your face. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start applying the CA. So I'll apply a couple of coats of CA guys and then I think we'll call it a night and because um, I still a fair bit to go on this handle um, and we'll call it a night and then we can come back to it on um, Sunday, eh? How does that sound? So I'll get my CA. If I can get the top off. That's better. Jeez, the stick, I'll tell you. Even though you wipe them. Yeah, pups are good. Carbs is in. Evening carbs, how are you, buddy? Yeah, the pups are good, mate. The, um, the dog. My little boy, he goes in tomorrow for his op. He's getting his uh, D6 tomorrow. So um, that'll be them both done. Whoa, -ho, look at that, boys and girls. Look at that. What do you reckon? Hi. Woohoo. Now you can see the difference between the barrel there and the barrel here. Now I'm going to put some on here. And we still got a little black off there, so um Don't worry about these rings in here because I'm going to have to work them out after. Um, that's obviously just been with the, um, the tool or the, um, the fastener bit. But you can see the barrel there now, so you know those cracks are still there, but it's darkened them down now. And once, the, once we get enough coats of CA on that, that'll flatten them out. And you know, you won't see any indents or lines there, it'll flatten it out. You'll, you'll still see the cracks and the defects in the timber, but that's, it's all natural. Um, but, you know, there's no ongoing issues with anything there. And it's going to take a fair few coats, but that's just letting you see that holographic now. You can see the colour change there. Let me just change to the other camera and see if that's any, any different, if it shows anything any different. Let me um, just move the camera a tick. I don't think we'll get it close enough to, um, and we're probably in the wrong we're probably on the wrong view and it, it's, it's not quite the right angle to see the actual handle itself but 
there you can see the bowl. So now you can see these cracks that I was talking about in here in the timber. So they'll they'll be totally filled. And um, there is a few round, geez, that paper tile smoking in my face as the, as the CA is going off. Um, and there is a couple just in and around this area here as well. So they'll get um, smoothened over with the CA. But there you can see the colour. You can see the chameleon coming through and you can see the gold holographic there as well. And it, like I said, it goes up into the top section of the handle here as well. So there is a bit of colour in there the, with the holographic. So yeah, I mean, you'll see it better once it's all re-sanded again, once we get more coats of CA on it, once it's all sanded again and uh, polished up, that's when you really get to see it. But I just wanted to get it to a point tonight um, where you could see it and then we'll do the second part of this one on um, Sunday, Sunday night. So I'll just slow that down a little touch for the CA. And I'm just going to throw a couple more quick coats on it and then we'll call it a night guys, I think. So we'll just keep working on filling those cracks, that's the main thing. And it doesn't matter... Um, doesn't matter about the coats whether you get a few ripples here and there because once you sand it all out anyway um, it smoothens out and everything goes back to normal. I should actually have my activator out as well just to give it a quick squirt just to um, set it. You can see that tile smoking away there in the shot. You look at that. That's the bad part. That's the fumy part that gets to you and gives you flu symptoms if you um, if you take too much of that in. So um, yeah, you do have to be careful with this process. One of the drawbacks. You'll see it go again here once it starts to... Oh, we didn't see it as much that time, unless it hasn't gone yet. Yeah, there it goes now. Yeah, I don't think the camera's picking up. Yeah, there it goes. You can see the smoke there now. There it goes. And that's why CA is such a good finish to put on these things because it is so hard wearing, um, but it fuses as well. It fuses itself to itself, fuses it to acrylic, all that sort of stuff, you know? So you can start see we're starting to get some lines in the CA now, but like I said, it doesn't really matter because um, we just keep going over the top with more and more CA until we get everything filled. And then once it's filled, we can then go back to sanding. So there's more, you can see the smoke coming off that again. There you go. And that's just the CA curing on the paper towel. I've got 
One last little bit in the end here, which I'm going to use for here. There it goes, is that in? Okay, we're good. Yeah, so they're starting to fill, um, but they've got a little bit to go yet. So, you know, I'm gonna have to put quite a few coats on them yet. Let me just go back to that other shot because I think that shot picks up the chameleon better. Um, but like I said, this brush has got a lot of work to be done in, in, in here yet. Um, and it's got a lot more sanding, maybe even two or three times to be sanded yet before it will be a um, acceptable uh, finish on the handle. So guys, I don't like leaving you without a finished project, but like I said, we're up to nearly two hours now, five minutes short of two hours, and uh, I just don't just don't think it's fair that we go for three hours all the time so um, I'm actually going to call the stream short and um, we'll come back to it on Sunday night along with whatever else I can bring to you. How does that sound? All good? Yeah, I'm fairly open in here, Brett. Um, the top of the walls on two sides are, are open by about, you know, um, they're open at the top by about that much, so it's pretty well ventilated. And I do have two whirly birds. I've got one just in front of me up, up in the roof here, and then there's another one further back. So I've got a lot of natural um, free flowing air in here. Plus I've got a big wide gate on the back, which has got um, hardwood uh, timber on it. Um, and that's again it's not a closed in guy it's it's all open top and bottom and, and between the spars of timber as well so there's plenty of ventilation in here in the summertime I do have a big industrial fan there as well which I turn on um, and I do have face shields and everything but for the purpose of doing the live streams I don't put any of that on if I was turning a big bowl or something on one of my lathes um, then I would be wearing my face shield because it's dangerous if you do have an accident and something comes off but with these little shaving brush handles, it's not too bad. Um, but that's why you'll see me normally bring up the tail stock to give the uh, the brush support and all that sort of thing. It's to make it so that I'm taking every other precaution that I can take um, whilst I'm turning so that I don't get hit in the face by something, you know. Um, but like I say, when I'm doing my normal turning, I always wear my face shield as well. And that's a rated face shield as well. So, um, you know, it does protect you. I've seen too many people putting pictures up on Facebook, wood turners, um, putting pictures up on Facebook and they've smashed their face up or, you know, gave, gave themselves concussion or whatever because something's come off the lathe and hit them in the head. So, um, yeah, it's pretty dangerous. I mean, this thing spins, this thing can spin up to um, 3,000 RPMs. So when you've got something spinning at 3,000 RPMs and it comes off and the rotational force on the lathe is towards the turner as well, so it won't flick it away from me, it'll flick it towards me. Um, so that's why you'll see turners will stand to the side of the piece that they're turning, um, or to this side of the piece that they're turning. Um, typically never directly straight on like that. Um, sometimes I do, but small pieces like this, I'm not too concerned with these ones. Like I said, I, I try and take other safety precautions to eliminate the possibilities. Um, but if I had to wear my face shield and, and my uh, respirator and all that sort of thing, um, I wouldn't be able to talk to you in the stream. I'd have to be keeping taking it off all the time to talk. So that's the reason I don't wear it here. But uh, like I said, I'm fairly comfortable that I've got plenty of ventilation, free flowing air through the place, and uh, doing these on, on the smaller lathe. I'm never spinning this at 3000 RPMs anyway. I'm normally around about anywhere between 1000 to 1500, 1600. RPM, um, 
that's probably the fastest and a lot of it's sanding and, and I'm doing the sanding at only a few hundred RPM so um, pretty safe guys, pretty safe. Anyway, let me get my, uh, my end screen ready. So again, um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming into the, um, into the stream. Um, if you haven't subscribed guys, anybody in there, we're up to about nine people in the stream at the moment. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you can subscribe down below. Click the little bell as well, and that bell will allow you to be um, notified when, any, when I put up any new videos or when I go live. Um, and then if you've got the time, you can drop in and, and view, the, uh, view the stream. If not, you can go back and watch the replay um, at a later date and a time suitable to yourselves. I do really appreciate everybody dropping in though. It makes it all the more worthwhile for me. Um, give the videos a like as well. If you want to give them a like, drop some comments in there. Feel free to share the links as well. If you want to put the videos out anywhere else, feel, feel free to do that. Um, I'm comfortable with that, just don't go bombarding people and peeing people off, so um, they're all good with that. Brett, I'll look forward to your next shave report, mate, um, with, the, uh, with the rhodium and your other brush as well that you got, so I'm looking forward to seeing your reports there, mate. Razor, I hope you get yours tomorrow, um, and if I do sneak in a sneaky stream and you're around, drop in and let me know how you go, what you think. Um, I think you'll be pretty impressed though, hopefully. Um, anyway guys, I'm just going to um, shut the shed door, so I'll put my ending screen up and, um, and we'll um, catch up with you on Sunday if not before. How does that sound? Alright, thanks guys, catch you later eh? Cheers for now, cheers, take care.